as a developer, knowing what tools to use is half the battle. The other half is figuring out how to use them. I can help you with the first half. This right here is every single major tool on Solana. No matter what you're doing, front-end development, smart contract, or program development, or maybe you're just playing around with NFTs. I'm gonna walk you through every single tool at a high level, explain what it does, so you know what to use the next time you're building something. Let's start from the top. You've got the Playground and the Explorers. The Playground is a development environment in your browser that lets you build, test, and deploy programs on the Solana blockchain. It's got a bunch of templates and tutorials so you can get started instantly. The Explorers are the main way to look at what's happening on the blockchain. The official Explorer is pretty solid, but it lacks a bunch of features and it isn't very user friendly. So I like using SoulScan or Solana FM as they're a bunch better. Moving on, we've got the CLIs. The Solana CLI is the most comprehensive tool for interacting with the Solana blockchain. Whether you're looking to send transactions or talk to validators or just look at data, whatever you want to do with the Solana CLI can probably do it. The SPL token CLI is specifically for interacting with the token program. So if you wanted to launch a token or mint something or transfer something, this is what you would use. The Solana test validator is a tool that comes bundled with the Solana CLI. This lets you set up a local Solana network on your machine. This is really useful for deploying programs locally because you don't have to pay transaction fees and you can test them out real fast. It's not really well supported on Windows, so I would recommend either using Mac OS or Linux, or if you do have a Windows machine, I would uh, recommend using WSL, which is Windows subsystem for Linux for it. The Solana program library is a collection of commonly used programs like the token program and the swap program. These are deployed and maintained by the Solana foundation, so anyone can use them. They save you a bunch of time, so if you need some of these common programs, you can just look up the docs on the Solana program library and how to use them instead of deploying them by yourself. Solana Web 3.js is the most popular SDK. This is the JavaScript SDK. This is how you write JavaScript applications to interact with the Solana blockchain. So this could be a Node.js script. It could be a React app. It could be, I don't know, whatever else you want to use to write JavaScript to interact with Solana. This is what you'd use. Moving one level deeper, we've got a bunch more SDKs. So Solathon and Solana Pi, these are Python SDKs for interacting with Solana. These are not official, uh, they're community efforts. You've got Solnet, which is a .NET SDK, Solana Go, which is a Go SDK, Sol4K, which is a Kotlin SDK, Unity, which is a Unity SDK. And then of course, we've got Create Solana Dapp. This is a CLI tool for creating Solana apps. So if you wanna make an app in React.js or Next.js, this is the latest and most up-to-date uh, system we have for creating apps. They've also got support for Vue.js, Vault, and React Native coming up later. You can also uh, make Anchor projects with it. Uh, I'll talk about what Anchor is later, but that's this level. Let's go a bit deeper. We're going underwater. You've got the wallet adapter and the mobile wallet adapter. These are a bunch of libraries for interacting with Solana wallets, so you don't need to write any custom code for adding support to wallet in your app. You just use the wallet adapter and this would add in all the functionalities for interacting with the wallet, connecting with them, sending transactions. The mobile wallet adapter is the exact same thing, but for mobile applications. So if you've got a React Native app or if you've got a PWA, which is a progressive web app, this is what you would use. This lets you interact with wallets that are installed on a user's phone. The Seed Vault SDK is for interacting with the Seed Vault on a Solana Saga phone. This is really only for uh, mobile wallet, uh, for wallet developers. So if you're not a wallet developer, don't worry about the Seed Vault SDK. Solana Pay is a protocol for creating and consuming transaction requests. Uh, you can do this via QR code. So this right here, this entire QR code would be an entire transaction request. You could scan this and this would send money to someone, to a store. It's really popular for uh, in-person commerce stores. So highly recommend this if you wanna set up a store, this is what you'd use. One level deeper, we've got Anchor and Seahorse. These are frameworks for creating Solana programs. So if you think about how React, you write JavaScript that generates more JavaScript. Anchor is you write Rust to generate lots more Rust. Um, this is a lot better way of creating Solana programs than using uh, native development because you have to end up writing a lot more Rust. Anchor, uh, it's, a, it's a framework that lets you speed things up and lets you develop programs on Solana a lot faster. Seahorse is similar, but it's in Python. However, it's in beta, so it's not used. Whereas everyone in the universe that develops on Solana pretty much uses Anchor. Cool. The SPL name service, this is how you would work with .sol domains. So if you want to send money to rather.sol, this is how you would you'd figure out what that resolves to. 
Arweave and ChatterDrive are off-chain storage solutions. So storing stuff on Solana is quite expensive. So what you do is you'd use an off-chain solution like Arweave or ShadowDrive. Think of these like Google Cloud or Amazon S3. They're permanent, they're decentralized, and they're really freaking cheap. So if you wanna make an NFT collection and you've got 10,000 really big assets, this is, a, is where you'd store them. Speaking of having 10,000 NFT assets, you've probably also got 10,000 NFT JSON files. You would use the sugar CLI to manage those NFT files. So whatever assets you have for your NFTs, you want to manage them, create them, update them. You would use the sugar CLI. Once they're all ready, you would use the candy machine CLI uh, to actually deploy them. So candy machine is a CLI that lets you deploy NFT collections. Going deeper, we've got Aman. You remember how we had the Solana test validator that set up a local Solana network on our machine? Aman is a wrapper around that. So they took the Solana test validator and they added a couple things on top. Aman is mainly used for testing SDKs and apps that use Metaplex. So if you're building, let's say an NFT marketplace and you wanna see how the marketplace interacts with Metaplex and how it interacts with NFTs and how it interacts with Solana, you would use Aman. It's also got this really cool uh, explorer that's uh, forked. So you got the Aman Explorer. And if you've got Aman set up and running locally, it's going to connect to this explorer and you can see what's happening. Moving on, we've got Octane. So Octane is a gasless transaction relayer. Every transaction on Solana has gas. If you don't want your users to pay the gas, you can pay the gas. And for that to happen, the, the, uh, the transaction goes from the user to your transaction relayer to the blockchain. So the user has a transaction, you pay for it, and it's sent off to the network. Think of it like a gas station. Moving on, we've got Anchor Space. So this is kind of nerdy. So when you're making uh, programs on Solana, you have to manage the space for each field. So you you can just paste in your anchor code over here and it's gonna tell you how many bytes or how much space your code or your, your structs need. Next, we've got XNFTs. This is not actually a tool or a library. This is a type of product. So if you want an NFT that has code inside it, this is what you would make. An XNFT is an executable NFT. This is their library. This is the backpack wallet, which supports XNFTs. So you can have an NFT that has code inside it, and that is an XNFT. Finally, we've got OpenBook. OpenBook is an exchange where dApps and users can submit their trade orders. You can think of it like an exchange where that has multiple different UIs. So I could submit an order on Mango, you could submit an order on DexLab, and because we're all they're all using OpenBook under the hood, our orders will get matched. So if you're building a trading application, for instance, you'd get order you'd use OpenBook to get access to more orders. Further down, we've got Switchboard and Pith. These are oracles. Oracles are used to get off-chain data on-chain. So let's say you've got the price of gold. You can't find that reliably on-chain. What you'd use is something like an oracle like Switchboard or Pith to get the price of that on-chain. You can also use these to get the price of on-chain assets very reliably and securely. So the price of, let's say, a token like Sol, you could get that into your app for trading or exchange purposes, and you can be sure that these guys have the right price. It's not uh, lacking behind the market. Metaboss is actually so cool that I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it up here. I'm going to bring Aman down because if you're working with NFTs, Metaboss is your best friend. It is a Swiss army knife that lets you do a bunch of things with NFTs. You can uh, burn NFTs, airdrop NFTs, update the metadata of NFTs, decode the metadata of NFTs. Anything you can think of doing, any common tasks that you do with NFTs, Metaboss can probably handle it. Next up, we've got Umi. Umi is a Solana framework for making JavaScript clients. So if you think back to how web3.js had atomic units for every single thing we'd want to do with JavaScript on Solana, Umi takes that and bundles common items. So you've got a bunch of interfaces, let's say, for instance, the signer interface or the RPC interface that represents a Solana client. So if you're building JavaScript clients, check out Umi. It's really handy. And finally, in this layer, we've got Clockwork, which is really cool. Clockwork is a cron engine for Solana. So if you want to schedule transactions or if you want to have things done repeatedly, let's say you want to withdraw taxes every single day or you want to have something done repeatedly on time, it's a cron job engine for Solana. We're getting really close to the bottom here. The second last layer, we've got Shank and Solita. To explain what Shank and Solita are, I need to explain what IDLs are. So if you think of a smart contract or a Solana program like a vending machine, the things you can do on that vending machine are the interface. So 
An IDL is an interface definition language. It defines which buttons do what. If you don't have the IDL for a program, you don't really know what the program does. You don't know which which functions you can call, you don't know which buttons you can press, you don't know what outputs it's gonna give you, what format they're gonna be, you're not gonna know how to interact with a program if you do not have the IDL. Shank and Solita are two tools that help you automatically generate the IDL for your program. Shank is the part that runs with your Rust program, so this will annotate your Rust and generate the IDL, and Solita will take that IDL and it will turn it into an API. So you've got Shank, this is gonna do the annotation, and you've got Solita, which has a really cool animation. So you got the IDL going in and you've got the API or TypeScript API coming out. Oxilana, this is only this low because this is entirely in Rust. So if you wanna write your front end in Rust and you wanna write your smart contracts in Rust and you wanna do your unit tests in Rust, you can check out Oxilana. Better Call Soul, hmm, this should actually be a bit higher, I think, because this is really freaking cool. So Better Call Soul lets you create and send transactions from the web browser, or rather it lets you define transactions. So let's say I wanna hit the ping program and I can name this, you know, uh, hit ping, and then I can type in the program address and I can type in which accounts I wanna hit. So if you wanna interact with programs directly from your browser with a UI, not a uh, not with code, you can use Better Call Soul. It's really handy. I've even, I even got it uh, bookmarked because it's so freaking cool. Cargo Build BPF. This is not a tool or a library. This is a command. So you would use Cargo Build BPF if you are writing native Rust Solana programs. Uh, I don't really need to go into the explanation of this, but uh, when you actually do end up writing Solana programs, you're gonna use this. Finally, you've got the bottom layer, C-level attacks. This is security, very important when you're making contracts that are handling a lot of money. C-level attacks are a bunch of common exploits in the Solana programming model, and they've got a bunch of uh, proposed fixes and how you can avoid them. These are not the most up-to-date things, so make sure you also check other stuff. I'll have them linked in the description. And then you've got concurrent Merkle trees. So this is a type of data structure that you need to learn about and just at a high level understand how it works so you can build apps with compression. So if you're doing anything like compressed NFTs on Solana, you're gonna need to understand what concurrent Merkle trees are. And the final one of them all, Bakken. This is a program debugging app. So if you were building native or anchor Solana programs and you wanna debug them, you would use Bakken to debug them. Whew, it is getting hot in here, that was a lot. Um, I'm gonna have a Git repo with all of these explanations in text so you can go over them, you can refer to them again, over and over again in the description. I'm also going to have the links for all of these tools in the description, so if you need them, check the description. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the description. If you think I've missed any tools, put them in the description. I'm happy to put them in the description or in a pinned comment as well. Thank you all so much, good luck.